this is the latest e-bike model from Engway, the M20. It is a moped-style e-bike with a 750-watt motor, 20x4-inch fat tires, dual suspension, and an option to add a second 48-volt, 13-amp-hour battery for extended range. This e-bike has the style of a cafe racer and comes in three frame colors to choose from, black, white, or green. Engway is also giving a chance to win one of 10 of these e-bikes and early bird discounts on each bike. The M20 was delivered to me to test and review, but I actually have an idea to make this e-bike just a little more interesting. I will tell you what I have in mind a bit later in the video, but first I have to unbox and inspect the bike. It comes mostly pre-assembled and well protected with plenty of foam and may take an hour or two to dial it in and get ready for the first ride. With the protective foam removed, let's take a look at the accessories. It comes with generic pedals, a toolkit, good quality 2 amp charger, assembly manual, a bunch of stickers and a sturdy bag that can be mounted on the frame. In the second box there is the dual moped style LED headlights which look amazing. Since the cables are neatly routed, mounting the handlebars is really simple. Before mounting the front wheel, I attach the mudguard in place. The front wheel does not come with a quick release axle, but it is still easy to take the front wheel on and off. I did find that the provided tools don't fit both nuts on the axle, so I had to use what I have instead. I'm using a bit of grease on the pedal threads for easier removal if needed. I then mounted the headlight holders on the front forks with a bit of foam tape to protect the stanchions from any scratches. I then connect the plugs for the headlight and tuck them inside the casing to protect from any water. The 48 volt 13 amp hour battery is removable, has a USB charging port for your devices and a capacity indicator to check the battery level. I think this e-bike looks amazing with the green color of the frame, the 20 inch fat tire wheels, dual front LED headlights and the brake light in the back. The brushless geared motor in the back produces plenty of torque for climbing and quick acceleration combined with the standard Shimano 7-speed drivetrain. The front forks have a compression adjustment knob and together with the shock in the rear and the fat tires on both wheels result in a smooth and comfy ride on every road. The battery is 48 volts and 13 amp hour but a second battery can be added to double the capacity and increase the range. The handlebars are nearly 70 cm in width with the throttle and the gear shifter on the right and the small but well visible LCD display on the left. It shows the basic functions and the pedal assist levels from 0 to 5. The dual LED headlights are really bright and look great. The brakes are basic mechanical disc brakes with 160 mm rotors in the front and back. I would like to see hydraulic brakes on a bike like this, but these do the job. So how is the ride quality of the bike? I was quite surprised how well this bike can ride in the snow. It has lots of torque and can even climb uphill on its own to a degree. With the fat tires and the dual suspension frame, it feels really comfy and fun even on snowy roads like this. I was able to reach a speed of just over 40 km an hour on a cold day which may impact the speed a little bit.
The ride is really enjoyable on a moped style e-bike like this, but I feel that it has more potential given the design and looks of the bike. So my idea is to upgrade the Engway M20 to something that's a bit more fun to ride by adding a new, more powerful battery and motor. To do that, I'll start off by attaching calipers that are set to exactly 100mm to the frame of the bike using a bit of tape. I can then take a photo, upload it into Fusion 360 and calibrate the image using the points on the calipers as reference. After entering the 100mm I set on the calipers, the image is now calibrated to match the actual size of the frame. I sketch a crude design of a battery enclosure to see what dimensions I have to work with for the new battery design. I then create the battery holder for the lithium ion battery cells in a compact design to fit the frame. Since I will be 3D printing the holders on my under 3 V2, I split the bracket that will hold the battery cells in three parts to fit my printer. Once the 3D model is complete, I load it into the slicer software to create a G-code for the printer to read. After loading up this orange PLA filament, the printing of the battery frame sections can begin. After several hours of printing and a few failed prints due to a clogged nozzle, you can see how the battery frame will come together. Using a bit of epoxy glue for plastics, I glued the frames together, leaving them overnight to cure. Instead of the 18650 cells that I always use on my e-bike builds, I decided to go with larger 21700 cells, each with a capacity of 4.8 amp hours. There's 130 of these cells in this box, but I will be using 100 of them to build a battery with 20 groups in series and 5 cells in each group, resulting in a 72 volt, 24 amp hour battery with a capacity of just over 1700 watt hours, which is almost 3 times more powerful than the battery that is included with the e bike. Since these cells have no wrap on them, I printed this simple jig to apply these insulation rings and the protective sleeves consistently. Once the insulating ring is pressed on the positive side, I place the plastic sleeve over the cell and heat it evenly so it shrinks.
After repeating that 99 more times, the cells are protected and ready. Just to check the capacity of a single cell, I am using this battery capacity tester to discharge the cell at 1 amp. After 5 hours, the capacity is showing 4879 milliamp hours. Since I am still waiting for most of the parts for the project to arrive, I will finish this part here. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the next video where I complete the battery build, unbox and test new parts and hopefully complete this project to see how much fun the Angway M20 can actually be.